bit of a different video today. We will mention boxing and mostly we'll talk about race here. So give the video a like. All of you woke MFers, give the video a dislike. Comment, sub. I will, haven't gotten to it yet, but will study Usik AJ on Patreon. So get ready. Anyway. I got some interesting comments on my video, Wilder Joshua Black Hopes, and uh, let me respond to some of the nonsense. Now, if I get frustrated and I clown some of these people, well, it's because I've come to realize that these people are not critical thinkers, they're not open-minded, they're completely incoherent, and they're so emotionally committed to the things they believe to be true, despite the blatant evidence to the contrary, I mean, they're, they're gone, right? There's nothing you can say, I believe, to make them, well, uphold the truth, because it's, it's right there staring them in their fucking faces, and they just blatantly reject it, right? So... When I called Castaño a white fighter, I knew someone would get triggered, right? And that was Jay Camacho. I don't know if that's a picture of himself, but if it is, a white guy um, says that we're reaching, we Anglos. I don't know why you're calling me an Anglo, but maybe because of the language that I speak, which um, you're going to have get a touche moment in just a second brother but apparently we're reaching hard and you know just because he has light skin that doesn't mean he's white right uh look at his father castaño is clearly a mestizo right so mixed <laughs> okay so <clears throat> then he goes on to say that all latin people fall within a gradient of indigenous and latins right spanish portuguese italian etc we are our own race. Don't identify as the color white, right? So what he's saying is that race is a social construct, right? Yeah, I mean, Bruce Jenner identifies as a woman, right? You are a Marxist and you believe race is a social construct. I mean, can you be any more retarded? So what do Brian Castaño, right, on your screen in just a second... For those of you who don't know what the man looks like, what do this guy, Brian Castaño, right? Uh, Erislandi Lara, right? And Yuri Orkis Gamboa have in common, right? According to Jay Camacho over there, they're all the same race. So, <laughs> do you see how retarded that shit is? Latino is not a race. Latino is the negation, the rejection of the concept of race, right? To say that a Latino is a race is to contradict yourself, is to be inco-fucking-herent, right? It's to reject basic fucking logic, right? So we figured this out a long, long motherfucking time ago, right? And then the Marxist school system interrupted, got in, and started brainwashing you motherfuckers with idiocy, shit that doesn't make any sense, right? Boys can be girls, girls can be boys. You can identify as any race that you want, right? You're essentially Rachel Dolezal, except Rachel had enough motherfucking sense to identify as a race that actually exists. But before we get to talking about <clears throat> that, which should be obvious to everybody, that which we figured out a long time ago, you know, now that I've debunked the nonsense of this Latino race, I'm going to go a step further and tell you what it actually means. So the term Latino, right, Latin, originally meant and should to this day mean, but that usage has fallen out of favor. It meant the nations, the peoples, right, the groups, the cultures, subjugated, dominated, conquered by the papacy, right? The Western wing of the Roman Empire that used Latin as their administrative language. Now, they'll tell you that Latin is a dead language, but I mean, f it's always really been that, or it was a language that was created for the administrative tasks 
of the Holy Roman Empire, right? Now, the Western, Eastern wing, since we're on the topic, and maybe this will help with clarity, the Eastern wing of the Roman Empire or Byzantium used a similar game to enslave the Slavs or the Esclavos. They created this fake Slavic identity. Now, look, yeah, all these people groups spoke a similar or depending on how you define it the same language so they did have a lot in common don't get me wrong but it was this fake slavic identity that was created by um what eventually became known as orthodox christianity right the papacy that eventually became roman catholicism those were the latins right latinos that's why <laughs> romanians are called latinos that's why uh Italians, Spaniards, uh, Portuguese, they're all Latinos, right? Um, but just like the Holy Roman Empire, Byzantium used the Holy Roman Empire with Latin, Byzantium used Old Church Slavonic and eventually their own alphabet, Cyrillic, right? To administer um, those people farms, right? The, the, to enslave the Slavs, essentially, to um, to create a sense of unity, right? To unite them with something, because that's what empires, if they want to survive, ultimately, that's what they have to do. They have to erase the individual differences between these people, right? And that's exactly what Latino to this day is, right? It completely ignores the fact that Elislandi Lara is... What well, we call him black Latino these days, but he's, you know, if, if you were to do a DNA test, right, because race is genetic, just like sex is, it's not a social construct, you'd find, I don't know, 80, 90% African genes, probably maybe a small portion of white and some Taino or Asiatic, right? He certainly has that look, right? But we call him black because that's what he is for the most part. All of us are mixed. Find me the palest, most northern, you know, blonde-haired, pale-skinned, blue-eyed, Icelandic woman, right? Or, or Swedish woman. And she'll have like, you know, 0.05% African genes somehow, right? We're, so we're all mixed, probably, most likely. But, you know, for our... For all intents and purposes, this is, you know, if we're going to uphold this concept, if if biological race is to manifest itself as a concept that's still valid in some way, shape, or form in our culture, right? Well, then he's, he's a black man, right? He's black, um, black Latino, if you will, right? Um, and obviously... Brian Castaño is a white Latino, right? Which isn't to say that he doesn't have some indigenous genes and maybe even a little bit of black or whatever, right? Sure does. Well, I don't know. Maybe he does, right? And then you have someone like Yuri Orkis Gamboa who is smack dab in the dead middle, right? Facial features are both white and black. So is the hair, right? Not really kinky a little, but not really fine either. And... You know, skin tone is right there, and, and he probably has some, it looks like he's got some, some of those Taino genes too, right? So, <laughs> it's, we figured this out a long time ago, right? There are three base races, right? Caucasoid, Mongoloid, and Negroid. But see how they've, they've turned these into swear words, right? Well... Negroid became, you know what, um, mongoloid is, is an offensive term. You call someone a mongoloid, you're, you're calling them, you know, retarded, essentially, right? And then Caucasian, oh, that's antiquated. We, we no longer do that, right? That's not, but, but this is how these distinctions get uh, lost, right? Because the goal is to what? Erase all the different all the differences, cultural, racial differences between all of us, just as the goal is to erase sexual differences, right? So, yeah, if we're going to call, in other words, if we're going to call um, Erislandi Lara black, and I think that's fair, 
who, who, who the fuck do you think Brian Castaño is? Who are you, Jay Camacho? You're a white man. Stop with all the safe hate. It's cool. It's okay to be white. It's perfectly fine, bro. But just as I say that, you know, there are three base races, somebody might bring up, you know, some of these confusing populations like the Australian Aborigines or the people that, in my opinion, they are related to because, gee, they look almost the same. The Dravidians from southern India, right? Well, who are these people, right? Some of them have somewhat kinky hair, right? They all have pretty dark skin, but not like dark, dark, dark African black, right? They have some white facial features, some more than others. Some of them have, you know, very round and shiny Asiatic, if you will, hair, right? Well, what are they? Well, where's India? India is smack dab in the middle between Europe, Asia, and Africa. So well, who are they, right? Well, they're the same um, or similar mix as the Aborigine, Aborigines of Australia, right? The Aborigine people. And I'm not saying they're exactly the same. And then the admixture is a little bit different, right? But, um, you know, if you want to call, call them black people, I got no problem with that, right? But not all Dravidians are that either. So w what are these, right? Well, these are hybrid these are hybridized. They're not really racist in and of themselves. I mean, I don't know what the dividing line is or at what point, you know, one of these hybrid peoples becomes a race. I don't know, right? I guess we'd have to agree on some kind of a distinction, which we don't have at this point in time, right? But even if we do, well, the Latinos have not been standardized to that point, to a point where we could call them even a breed. They're not even a breed. Like you get a breed of dog or whatever, and they all more or less look the same, right? That's not Latinos because Latino is not a race. It's the rejection thereof. It's a Marxist fucking concept used to divide people. While at the same time, uniting them in, under like a false identity in order to subjugate them and, and accept, you know, some kind of central, centralized rule, global rule, right? To accept imperial overseers, essentially, in my opinion. But real quick, maybe when it comes to, because this is interesting, I think, when it comes to Argentina, right? Well, because if you want to push this idea that Brian is in some way indigenous, right? Well, let's try to ascertain to what point, right? So who peopled the Americas, right? Definitely South America. Who? Well, this isn't even controversial. Like we know, right? We have the DNA evidence and well, we got <laughs> the quote unquote savages, right? Who peopled the Americas? Well, clearly Mongoloids, right? Now, I'm not going to make claims as to who came from where, but when you look at these people, this might as well have been taken in Indonesia, right? But this is the Puelche people of Argentina, right? Shocking. I mean, I thought we all knew this, right? So even though uh, there were definitely um, black Africans, if you will, I don't know if they were African, but they were definitely black people, as evidenced by the archaeological finds pertaining to the Olmec people, right? They were definitely in South America. And there were also, well, white people in the Americas, right? There were blue-eyed Native Americans, right? The, the blue-eyed blonde-haired mummies of Peru, right? Just like the blue-eyed, blonde-haired mummies of Egypt and China, right? They were in South America too, right? This is a historical account from a Spanish conquistador, right? Almost 500 years ago, right? 450 years ago. The ruling class in the kingdom of Peru was fair-skinned with fair hair about the color of ripe wheat. 
Most of the great lords and ladies look like white Spaniards. In that country, I met an Indian woman with her child, both so fair-skinned that they were hardly distinguishable from fair white men. Their countrymen called them children of the gods. Right? So the ruling class of the Incan Empire was white. And, I mean, is this shocking? Isn't that the world that you know? Isn't it? Right? So... And the Incas, um, the Incas conquered and subjugated these Asiatic groups of people, right? So, so even though the majority of the genetic stock in the Americas was Mongoloid, right? They have been mingling, intermingling with, well, black and white people for, I don't know. More than a thousand years? I don't know. Long, 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 long time. And then the Spaniards came maybe 500 years ago. And then there's just been an influx of Europeans, right? Which is why today the, the people um, that you call indigenous, right? Well, they still have some Asiatic features, right? But the hair is no longer as shiny or round. It's a little different and, and somewhat frizzy. And it's no longer in many cases pure black right there's a lot of brown and they have lost a lot of their asian if you will features right so if you're calling brian's dad a mestizo right because he was an indigenous the product of an indigenous american with who had a child with let's say a a, a white spaniard or whatever or a european right well, those indigenous people were already mestizos. They were already mixed, right? <laughs> and then more white blood was added, right? And and this is very evident if you study photos of the indigenous people of Argentina, or more precisely, maybe Argentina, because it's an Italian name. Because after the Spaniards, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, the second biggest European influx was from Italy, right? Which is why you're Latinos. <laughs> so these are the, the Yaguita people, which Wikipedia calls more advanced culture who were known for trading goods, right? So they came into contact with other cultures and traded with them, right? And when you look at these people, I mean, you go from white to Asian, right? Or almost white to almost Asian in one photo, right? When you look at some of the other pictures of these people, um, what well, they look like Romanian or something, right? Don't they? They look like, well, they could be Italian, maybe some of them, most of them, right? Where were the Asiatic features, right? So, and if you look at, the more you start looking at the pictures of indigenous people of Argentina, the further back you go, the more Asiatic features you will see, and the more into the future you go, or the present, um, those traits, you know, increasingly get bred out, right? But what, what did the white people do when they got there, right? Well, they genocided people, right? So today, 60% of... Argentinians trace their heritage to Italy, right? And what about all those people that were descended from the Spaniards that came 500 years ago and kept coming, right? Then there was all kinds of people from all over Europe, right? Jews before the Second World War, Germans after the Second World War, uh, Eastern Europeans after, you know, communism fell. They've just been... Have you not seen what Argentinians look like, right? Have you not seen these people, right? You go to Argentina, you might as well be in Italy, right? Because that's Argentinians are white people, right? If we're going to say they're anything, right? They're white, which isn't, again, to say that they're not mixed or anything. But Argentina, Paraguay, and Chile... If, if you go travel there, I mean, yeah, the landscape is different, the culture is slightly different, but 
it feels like fucking Europe. It feels like Spain or Italy because that's essentially what it is. So just because Brian has some remnants of indigenous, which was already mestizo anyway, for all our intents and purposes, right? If Erisina Andilara is black, well, he's obviously white because Latino is not a race. So then I got a couple more geniuses commenting commenting on the video, like Andre Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay says that there's no such thing as a black hole. Louise Patterson, um, Ali Frazier, Foreman Holmes, Tyson, holy field, Lewis. Black fighters have dominated the heavyweight division for decades. Legends were made. Recently, Fury and Usyk have arrived on the scene and are great fighters, but they are on the short list of great white heavyweights, heavyweight champions. Facts. <laughs> now, that could very well be a fact if that's what the populace believes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the truth, right? Because if you actually count the heavyweight champions from the inception of the Marcus of Queensbury rules or what's considered modern boxing, there have been 19 white heavyweight champions and 20 black ones. So it's basically 50-50. And I am counting Usyk as the lineal champion. Yes, I am. And maybe I missed one here or there, plus or minus one. It's it's basically 50-50, right? So, you know, to say that there's no such thing as black hope is to completely misunderstand the concept, right? Uh, there were plenty of black people, and these guys definitely marketed themselves to those crowds, AJ and Wilder, who wanted to see a black champion. Just as there was a time in history where white people, some white people, wanted to see a white champion. And that's why he was called the Great White Hope, right? So it's perfectly fair, and it makes perfect sense to call these guys Great Black Hopes. Because they tried, but ultimately failed, and a lot of people were hoping... And again, they did mark them, market themselves to, uh, you know, the racially charged and racist black public. And they fucking failed miserably, right? But I find it interesting how, you know, some of the black Power Rangers will talk about how, you know, their history has been suppressed. And it's true a lot of history, regardless of what race can claim that history, if, that's kind of weird, but whatever, um, has been suppressed, right? And it's weird that, you know, the black people that will point to the Olmec statues that clearly have kinky hair, big noses, big lips, and they just look like black men, right? They'll completely ignore the Olmec statues that look like people from a different race, right? Because the Olmec society from the archaeological record was multiracial, right? So it's quite hypocritical to just say, oh, Olmec were black when clearly they were of maybe all races, right? Or maybe one of them hybrid peoples like the Aborigines, right? Maybe a section of them sailed to Australia from Africa. I don't know. Some of them stopped over in India and bred with those people. And maybe some of them may, made their way to um, made their way to the Americas. And it's it, it's kind of suspect how we are led to believe that there were so, like, millions or something like that, or maybe a million of black people brought on boats from Africa and someone, you know, tried to figure that out logistically and it just didn't make sense. It would have taken so many boats, so many different trips to, to bring that number of people alive to the Americas that that it leads them to believe that there was already a lot of black people here. And, well, like here in Esmeraldas, province of Ecuador, there's this lore of, like, slave ships crashing um, on the shores of Ecuador, right? And those black people getting off the ships and populating that part of the Ecuadorian coast. And you go to Esmeraldas and it's, you know, predominantly black people and they're supposedly descendants of slaves that crashed there i mean maybe it's true right maybe it's bullshit maybe they were already there anyway look we just not that long ago had like a 70 year old man yeah okay he had wi-fi and all the water he needed and probably did have like a support helicopter but we had a seven year old man kayak from 
like Europe to Chicago and then back to Europe, right? There, uh, you know, the scientists are telling us that monkeys made it from the old world to the new world or maybe vice versa. I don't remember, right? On, on driftwood and shit, right? But us people who have supposedly evolved from such monkeys or something along those lines, right? We couldn't have done it, right? Columbus was the first one. Come on, man. When the Chinese chronicles tell you that we went to the Americas 2,000 years ago on on a ship that was 10 times the size of, you know, the Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria. And it makes perfect fucking sense. Just look at Native Americans. What do they look like to you? Anyway, but it's interesting how these people will talk about suppressed history while at the same time suppressing history themselves, right? Completely ignorant of the fact that it's basically 50-50 and there have been a lot of white heavyweight champions, almost as many as black champions, right? And completely ignoring, you know, Klitschko and the fact that a white man has been the champion in the heavyweight division for 20 years now, right? Black fighters have dominated the heavyweight division for decades. And Fury and Usyk just showed up recently, right? Uh, the last 20 years, <laughs> the white man has, has ruled the rules. That is what it is, right? Way to suppress history. And then we have this genius comment, right? From, I don't know if he is, but this is the black Israelite. Uh, PSYOP, right, has all the markings of a CIA PSYOP, just as the great Tartaria PSYOP or the Turbo Slav PSYOP has all the markings of uh, GRU or some other intelligence agency from the Eastern Bloc. You know what I mean? It, it And it's all just created, in my opinion, to divide people, right, make people fight amongst themselves while at the same time instilling into them this idea of like a great empire right in the back of their heads because ultimately the goal is globalization right but to get there you have to get people to fight among themselves amongst themselves and do the fighting for you i mean look at what's happening between russia and ukraine right brother killing brother fratricide anyway this guy says that the so-called black man is superior to everybody else right so clearly he's a racist that is the reality of the situation right it is so because i say so and that is how the god you seem to believe in made it oh i believe that god made it this way really i do <laughs> where did i say any of this right it's just this, like, I'm better than you. Everything I say is correct, and you believe it too because I'm better than you because Bible. Like, can you, like, make an argument? You know, like, watch this video and see how arguments are made and, you know, try it. Maybe it'll stick. Anyway, in Deuteronomy, it says, I guess, for thou art an, an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. I see no mention of black people. I'm pretty sure he's talking to the Hebrews, you know, the chosen people. So I'm st supposed to believe that, you know, the black man is superior. And that was written by a white Freemason who, you know, translated this this book that was written by some other white people yeah I, i'm sure i'm sure that's that's what happened the children of israel were and are so-called black people granted not every single dark-skinned individual oh okay so he makes a leap from what it says in the bible and then the children of israel were obviously black right i mean even if it says that in the bible which it doesn't um I don't think it does anyway. That's not proof. <laughs> anyway, the Inquisition slavery, the curses in the book of Deuteronomy have have a real... Oh, okay, so but he basically says, you know, it is so because I say so. It's pretty obvious. How is it obvious? Genetics in both physical and mental areas support black supremacy. Genetics support black supremacy. 
there's there's been DNA studies done to show black supremacy. I mean, citation needed, please. The recent condition is a simple fulfillment of prophecy and the result of a covenant that was broken. Oh, okay. So black people are superior, right? In general, except for right now. Well, that sounds fucking incoherent as fuck. So are they or are they not superior? Now, what about what about when the white man was ruling the heavyweight division? That, was that the fulfillment of prophecy? And how was it the fulfillment of prophecy when then the black man was ruling the heavyweight division? And once again, the white man is he ruling the heavyweight division. Does the prophecy account for all of that? And what is this prophecy, right? Like This is just complete gibberish, you know what I mean? But it's not that difficult to figure out why, you know, the white man had success at first, then it was a black man's time, and now once again, it's it's the white man's time. It's not that difficult to figure out. Like, wh why did this happen? Well, because the majority of the people participating in Marcus of Queensbury modern boxing were initially white, right? Those were the most populous immigrants into this new land and you know they didn't have any money and for a lot of them this was a way to perhaps make a lot of money and, and be famous right and then as black people started participating in the sport and one guy maybe most notably someone like jack johnson had a lot of success and made a shit ton of money other poor black people saw this and aspired to to go and do that and you know once the white man's condition was improved in the United States, they moved in, into other fields, you know, and, and started doing other things. And boxing has lost some of its early popularity, you could say. Or it was eventually that did happen. And a different, more poorer social economic group, uh, you know, pulled themselves by their bootstraps, competed, worked hard and got the glory as as the white social economic group went into doing other things right but that's that's super easy to see when it comes to the black men retiring from the sport in in large numbers and going to do other sports as they say right that's why there's no black heavyweight champion because they've gone and done other sports and there's some truth to that don't get me wrong but that's easy to see right but it's not easy to see when it comes to the white man becoming you know uh, firemen, police officers, bankers, accountants, you know what I mean? Going into all these other professions and, and leaving boxing to the poorest of the poor because it's always been that. And now you look at, have you ever been to Ukraine? Have you, and do you know anything about Ukraine? Do, do you know how people in Ukraine have lived? The types of conditions that they've lived in for, well, hundreds of years now, right? Eastern Europe in general, like... Those people are hungry, man, right? So maybe that has a lot to do with the fact why they're winning. And then they had these role models, the Klitschko brothers, right? All of Eastern Europe, you could say. And they picked up the slack, right? So Floyd Mayweather already explained to you what it takes to succeed in boxing, right? Hard work and dedication. Now, do certain genetic traits that are passed down to certain individuals of certain races do do they help in boxing well yeah for sure if you got fast twitch muscles right then that's that's going to help you with with your speed right but i mean individuals of all races have that right there's certain genetic advantages to for black people they seem to have thicker skin the bruises don't show as much right um, they tend to have, on average, longer arms uh, than, you know, let's say white people. So they have certain advantages, but then white people have other advantages. They seem to be tougher. They seem to take punches better, right? They, 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 if, if their skin is not as tough, they seem to have better chins on average, right? This, these are just stereotypes. And plenty of them have plenty of fast twitch muscle, strength, you know what I mean? It's Boxing is one of those sports where everything is important, right? From your IQ to your toughness to hand speed to 
foot speed, you know what I mean, height and reach, but also being short is an advantage sometimes if you know how to use it, and that's where intelligence comes in, right? Boxing is so heavily based on technique, you don't have to have a lot of, let's say, athletic advantages necessarily, or you could have certain athletic advantages and still be able to dominate it so f as long as you're smart and you know how to how to use the advantages that you have and hide the disadvantages that you don't have. You know what I mean? So it's it's not that, again, I'm not saying that there aren't certain genetic traits passed down to certain populations, but that's definitely not by race, right? Because there's plenty of black fat asses. Well, wh where are their superior genetics? You know what I mean? And there's plenty of black fighters that don't have hand speed, right? that don't have punching power, that don't have foot speed, that, that aren't smart. And then there's others that are. It's like simply because one tiny little tribe in Africa makes excellent marathon runners, right? And like 95 or something percent of the marathon winners that are black, right, come from that little fucking village in Africa or whatever that little municipality in Africa. That doesn't that doesn't mean that like all Africans are great at running marathons. Because the West Africans fucking suck at it. They have too much muscle. You know what I mean? And I'm still waiting for a black man to win a strongman contest. I think Mark or whatever his name was came close, right? Maybe he did once. I don't remember. Anyway, that's dominated by you know, mostly Central and Northern, Euro Eastern, Central and Northern Europeans. But those are like very, very specialized sports, just as marathon running is, right? But that's not, but it's not like all white people from any country can win in these events. You don't see Italians winning, right? You don't see Spaniards winning. It's only certain groups of white people. So... Ah, oh, people are so fucking disappointing, man. Like, it's so easy to debunk the nonsense because it's fucking nonsense. The shit that you, some of you guys believe is just absolute nonsense and you were brainwashed to believe, to, to, to stick your own damn foot in your damn mouth anytime you fucking speak, right? Latino is a race, and that race encompasses all races. That doesn't make any fucking sense. That's contradictory. It's not a race. I told you what Latino means, right? Good luck debunking that, right? Uh, the black man is superior, except, and God made him superior, except right now he's not superior because God made him not superior. <laughs> it's just like, okay, so how is he superior? <laughs> <laughs> fucking moron and even if this story were true this prophecy or whatever it still doesn't align with what we see in reality right because black men is still the best when it comes to basketball right so what the fuck you're incoherent dude you're incoherent but uh, race and boxing man race and sports this this obsession with just being superior. What, what, what the fuck have you done lately? You know what I mean? Instead of fucking taking credit, just like you're not willing to take responsibility for that, for your great, 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 great grandfather raping your great, 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 great grandmother because he was white and white is whack, right? Just as you're not willing to take responsibility for that, what the fuck are you doing? How dare you take ownership of somebody else's achievements? Fucking clowns, man. Talk about incoherent. Did that make sense? We better have. Thanks for watching.